Hi, welcome to my Windows 10 machine. I was making tutorials how to install VirtualBox on Windows 10. We've done that. And we've uh, shown you what uh, settings I use, so the preference, preferred settings, right? And then I've installed Linux Mate and then dual booted with uh, BSPWM. I thought, why not uh, include also a video how to install Windows 10? And then afterwards, dual boot with uh, well any Linux distro out there. So first, of Windows 10 needs to be installed. You can download Windows ISO from uh, the net, from the Windows website. And I've done so, so it's, it's here, it's loaded. I'm going to click it so that we boot off from Windows 10. ISO, I'm going to press Ctrl F. So press any key to boot from CD or DVD. And I've just done that, so we're going to actually install Windows 10, go over all the screens. They will change in the future, so you will see different kind of setup screens depending on the uh, well, the version you download. So it seems that Windows 10 is going to keep Windows 10 as name, not 11, not 12, but a number, 1803 today. So English United States is an option here that I can choose and lots of time and currency elements and US or keyboard. Keyboard is important. I need to change my keyboard, but we'll see later on that it disregards this option altogether. I need to set it again later on. So anyway, English is good for me. Time and currency is all good for me. Belgian period, this is just an installation that I'll never touch again after this video. So I'm going to set it up. Sometimes I will pause since it will take some time. If it's the first time, blah, 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 there's the key. If you have a key, you can put it in here. Um, I'm thinking about an application. I think it's um, key bean something. So if you don't know your serial, everybody has a serial. You can find serials and you can write it down on a piece of paper and put it somewhere safe away. So if you have the key, you've paid for it, you definitely need to retrieve it, get it back. I think it's called key bean or something. Anyway, I don't have a product key, so a whatever option. And then home, home N, home single. I have some uh, choices here. Don't know where I got it from. Again, it's uh, downloaded from, from May, I think. So five months ago or so. So don't recall that. So I'm just going to choose one. Doesn't matter really for this tutorial. I accept the license terms. And now I can't upgrade anything, there's nothing there. So I'm gonna custom this and I'm gonna delete everything. So normally on a virtual box, you don't see this kind of pop up. What you'll see is what I'll show you in a minute. So I'm gonna delete everything since there was already a system in place, but I had uh, my, my space, I ran out of space. So I had to delete some stuff on my machine and we're back for a second trial. So this is what you normally see. So drive unallocated space. 40 gigabytes is actually not enough for Windows. Um, I see it's 80 gigabytes is more or less what we are using at, uh, at work. So and it does, does not even contain Adobe or anything. It's just Microsoft Office Suite and some, you know, basically some uh, browsers and all that. So, but um, it contains Windows operating system is just big. Okay, so 40 gigabytes will do for now, but if you want to work on it, it's gonna be uh, not uh, spacious at all. So, unallocated space, you click on here and you say new and just say apply. And to ensure that Windows features work correctly, Windows might create, not might, will create additional partitions for system files. That should change the word there. So, there you go, it has um, made another partition, system reserved there, and I've lost, well, not much, 500 megabytes. Then you go for next, and he's going to un extract anything that he needs onto this uh, particular partition or partitions. So let's pause the video here, and let's get back where he wants some information from me. There he is again. He wants something for me. Let's start with 
with a region is this right United States yes that's totally wrong and that's of course because of me but then he wants to address the keyboard which is obviously wrong again so next I've just typed this already but I have to do it again and then skip this and then some very important setup he's going to do I better pause this here next choice is are you a company or personal it's gonna be personal for sure next and then he will try to keep you to push to the Microsoft account. Watch the Microsoft account and MSN and Outlook and Hotmail, all kinds of um, extensions, .com, .be, .de, etc. So uh, he wants to make sure that you log in with a Microsoft account. The advantage is you have your App Store or your store, Microsoft Store then, and you have your settings that are synchronized to the nets so if you log into another computer you have the same microsoft account you get all the same wallpapers and all the settings come back in you can share you can say what you want to share so privacy is possible but if you don't want all that you have to do some things some steps so i don't want to use or create a microsoft account i want to have an offline account Again, he wants to sign me and push me to the Microsoft instead. I said, no. What's go who's going to use it? Or even better, use an online account. Not even better. I'm going to use a local account with a password. Or even better, use an online account. Now, I've made up my mind. So, he wants to confirm passwords and all that. Security question one. What's your first pet's name? it was Eric security question 2 childhood nickname my nickname was Eric question 3 first name your oldest cousin first school name the city where you were born I guess it was Eric as well so next use speech recognition no by Cortana where do you live don't want to share that find my device no nope, that's okay i'm good send diagnostic data to microsoft full basic or none oh none is missing basic then accept improve inking typing recognition nope i'm good get tailored experience with diagnostic data no thank you accept let apps use advertising id nope i'm good and those are the options today on this version. It might differ in the future in other versions. I'll better pause this again because this takes a while as well. Several minutes. All right, in the meantime, he booted up and I'm going to close everything here. So this is Windows uh, 10. We could have a look at the version. I don't think I've looked already suppose it's 1803 but that's a suppose so system about uh, 1803 windows 10 pro is now installed and all is fine except that this is a little bit small so i've tried it already last time it does not recognize the 1920 or 1080 so but that is for me whatever the the, the topic of this video is actually to dual boot, right? So I have my Windows system. Now I do want to quickly go for you to, with you to the disk and disk management, just to take a look at the system. So actually, this is a bad uh, look. I could change that if you like. It's in the view, I guess, somewhere in settings or something. There is the scaling is off, totally off. Um, on the, up to, capaci to capacity I think that's more honest so there's a very very small partition down here which actually is uh, your, your boot ups thing here um, system reserve that's this little thing of only 500 or let's say 600 megabytes and then there's all the rest so the C drive where everything is uh, on 
I'm not going to do this thing. I'm not going to say I'm going to shrink the volume here. You could do that and say shrink it. Now I'm just showing it to you because maybe you need to do for some reason. I don't know. So you can shrink it and use these things here to just say shrink. But I'm going to leave it to Calamares. Our graphical installer can easily do the same job and maybe better. So shut down. And instead of the Windows ISO that's in here, I'm going to use some other Linux distro, right? Doesn't need to be Arch Linux as long as they provide some way to split up or, or resize your hard disk. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use the Mate, that one as the last one created. So I'm going to use that one and start it. So it's in here, it, the same applies if you have now an, an actual laptop or an actual hard drive and desktop. You put in the USB and if you put in the USB you either get this one which is a grub or a bias look or you get the UFI look which is uh, four or five lines all black, no design, no colors and you choose to boot up. And then everything is again looks so similar. You'll boot up with your Linux distro of choice. In this case, I'm booting off with Arco Linux. And your Linux distribution should give you the possibility to quickly change um, anything you, you want, really. So that's the language, that's where you live. There's also here the possibility to change the language and the numbers and the dates locale, so you can change them here, just keeping everything as is. The only thing I really need to change is my keyboard. I need to have Azerty rather than QWERTY. That's a must for me. And then here is the interesting part in Calamaris. Here you can say, I want to have Windows and Linux. So install alongside is the option to have a dual boot. You have to tell them what partition. So you have to click here. You have to use your mouse and say, this partition, I want to, well, allocate as much gigabytes as I want to that particular partition. So green is Windows, so you say I'm a gamer, okay, then you leave this very very big and I guess I'll need for Arch Linux if you have 20 it's going to be more than enough. But this is a uh, virtual hard disk for of 40 gigabytes so I'm going to leave it to more or less 2020. So that's the main point here. This is the button or if you have uh, already installed something and you want to replace it with another uh, desktop environment, then it's this op option you have to take and it will look like this. Look, it will have two pieces and you replace one piece later on with another desktop environment. That's another possibility. Or you say, no, Windows can go, everything out, that's erase. So I guess for Everyone starting out in Linux, the three first ones are the basic ones, the good ones. Try these. So I'm going to install alongside. I'm going to say next. And then we are going to see that everything changes. I install a multi minimal. Choose my password, login automatically, which is not going to work. Maybe you've seen it in other tutorials already and the reason why. And use the same password for administrator account. Next. So basically, Europe, Brussels, English, United States, English, United States for numbers and dates. Have my keyboard. It's Belgian. Gonna split Windows in two pieces. One piece is going to be shrunk, I think, <laughs> the past this. Uh, so that's it. And the rest of it is going to be Arch Linux B. So this name is not actually 100% correct. SDA2 is actually, the green part, is actually Windows. And that's the, the small boot up partition. So I'm going to say install. And we're booting off. I can better pause the video here and wait till everything is uh, unpacked and unsquashed is a proper word probably. All right. It's all done, he says. I'm going to restart now and boot up. So the same message will, will apply on an SD. Now this thing 
is not the proper um, the screen you see is not the proper screen you need to see so you have to power off in a virtual box and get rid of that ISO just he's trying to boot up from there so pop out the USB the actual hard uh, USB stick pop it out and then uh, let it boot into the hard disk or the SSD in the same way I'm doing it here on a virtual box this is the actual screen you need to see this is new I'm gonna use my arrows so we can take a look at it otherwise after three or four or five seconds it's gone and it's going to boot up the first the first line is the default line okay but many people out there just want uh, Linux to, to try out you know to, to learn and try out and they don't want Linux to be the first one to be the default one so I'm gonna show you how to get this win this line Windows 10 all the way up to the first line so you will boot up standard with Windows 10 and if you say no I'm gonna learn some some Linux now today and then you go down and this will be the line then for Arc Linux B Linux or just Linux so let's boot up anyway because if you want to change that grub line you need to boot up in Linux you can't do it off. it's not advised to do it in Windows just do it in Linux it just works and it's easy so how the login was set is not working that's the reason for it and we'll fix it later so this is Mate Minimal this may be also a nice way to quickly show guys hey this is uh, what you can get it's free as Linux is lots of tutorials everywhere on the net and this is what you get for installing Mate and in this case Arc Linux B Mate so that's that um, how do you fix the let's do that first how to fix the auto login quite easy you have to know that we are working with Lightium so etc Lightium Lightium.conf right mouse click open with sublime text open it up this is not helping plain text use Perl everything that's light is working and everything that's black is not working it's just gibberish for the machine so tell them forget about XFC we're running Mate forget about XFC we're running Mate and that's it basically so changing two four letters into other four letters and that's it you're set to go next time you'll auto login will be automatically now fixing this windows first line and we want to be uh, make sure that the default line the default boot up if you walk away if you boot up your machine and walk away that you come back and you have windows not linux right there is already an accessory i think it's the system tools grub customizer that's the one we need and if it's not installed we need to install it so it always depends what machine you install if you have um, bsp wm it was installed there i just uh, made a video about it but it's not here so the name is important if you don't see grub customizer don't think i've installed it because this is a minimal installation so we skipped we we deleted a lot of things which in effect gained us 700 megabyte so installing grub customizer is needed sometimes depending on what ISO you have started out maybe you've even go, gone to phase 5 eh? Arch Linux then you install this and it's actually from community I see now this means I just could have done it with sudo pacman minus s let's do it so you can see it that it works as well minus s grub customizer so it's included in the Arch Linux packages that's the message I want to get across great super tool but where is it so you have to know all the information I guess it's gonna be here somewhere or uh, no oh maybe here as, as well this is a multi desktop could be in the control center as well and type in grub there he is so this application requires us to be root let's become root and then actually it's very very easy indeed to make sure that Windows 10 is first Windows 10 is here all you have to do is click 1 2 3 
four, five times on arrow up. Save. Done. That was the technical part. Now we have Windows 10 as the default boot up. And why? Because in general setting it says default entry, first entry. So five arrow up, save, done. Let's try it out. Shut down, restart. Not touching my keyboard in any way. We'll see that crop has changed. Windows 10 is there as the first one. Waiting for it to come down. And there you go. You have Windows 10. That's default. And if you want to try out Linux, arrow down when you boot up. Choose the line you want. And you've booted up. Not gonna wait for, or should I? Yeah, we'll wait so you see everything is okay. And then, that's the end of the tutorial, right? Well, Eric has always something up his sleeve. It does not boot in, it does not auto log in, in Windows. That's possible too, and it's even an exam question at our university. So, people who are watching from my school, they will say, hey, I've seen that. NetPlus is something quite interesting. User must enter a username and password to use this password, this computer. No, I want to get rid of that and apply. Okay, what password does Eric need to fill in? Then you fill in your password. Okay. And at this point in time, this NetPlus is not reachable anyway, anywhere in the menu. You just need to know the words. Tell them not to ask the password anymore, not to test you again. And then in the mornings, you can say, I'm going to click on the start button already. And then everything is booted up. You're in your desktop. Once you get back and your coffee is in your hand, you are already logged in. He's not testing you at 6 o'clock in the morning if you still know your password. So this is an auto login in Windows. An extra tip or trick for you. All right, cheers. I think that covers everything. If you want to go back to your Linux system, all you need to do is restart. Wait for the grub to, re to, the grub to uh, reappear. Choose back, arrow down this line, and up you go. There you have your Linux system again. All right. I'm waiting for it to appear. Auto login is working. And I am out.